I'm going to be talking about the basics of sets. Here's some questions that you should be able to answer by the time that we're done. What's the definition of a set? What are three different ways to describe sets? What's the empty set? What's the cardinality of a set? What does it mean when we say that two sets are equal? How about when they're equivalent? What's a universal set? What does it mean to be infinite versus finite? And what is a well-defined set? So these are sets. All people enrolled in this class, all CNM students enrolled in Math 1210, the odd numbers between 5 and 10, cats, dogs, and birds, all natural numbers. So let's see if we can come up with a definition of a set. A set is a way of describing a group of related items. Have you ever had a garage sale? You can think of a garage sale as the set of all stuff that you want to get rid of. It's a set. There's different ways that we have to represent what goes into a set. And we represent sets using set notation. So we have a set builder form, a roster form, and a set description form. Let's look at each one. Quick example. This first example, set F. Now set F is going to be the set that contains my favorite colors. So set builder form would look like this. F is equal to, and then you've got a curly brace, X, and then a bar. X is one of Mrs. Sitkin's favorite colors, and then a closed curly brace. We always use those curly braces when we put things in sets. That's our container. So we can read that as the set F consists of all items such that each item is one of Miss Sitkin's favorite colors. That vertical bar is such that. The next way we can describe sets is in roster form, and roster form is just like it sounds like. We just list the things that are in the set. So in this case, we would put purple and orange in the set because those are my favorite colors. And finally, the last way, the easiest way often to describe a set is just, is just to describe it in words. So set F consists of the list of Miss Sitkin's favorite colors. Let's look at examples of each of those kinds of set descriptions. First of all, let's go into a little bit more detail on roster form. If set P is all the people enrolled in this class, then I would just simply list out each and every name of the people in this class. If I wanted the set of all students at CNM who are enrolled in any Math 1210 class, then I would sit down and I would list out all those names, and that'd probably be a pretty long list. Set O, the odd numbers between 5 and 10. Now when you say between, you do not include the endpoints, so I do not include 5 or 10. So the only odd numbers between 5 and 10 are 7 and 9. Now in set B, I've added the word inclusive at the end. That means I do include the endpoints. So the odd numbers between 5 and 10, I start with 5, it's included then 7, then 9, and of course 10 is not included just simply because it's not an odd number. Set A consists of cats, dogs, and birds, and here you go in roster notation, cats, dogs, and birds. Notice we, sell it, we, we separate each element with commas. Set N, all natural numbers, 1, 2, 3, dot, 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 now this is an example of an infinite set because there's an infinite number of natural numbers. I could put the next one 4, and then the next one 5, and then the next one 6, and there's always a next one, so you couldn't possibly list them all. So once we've established a pattern with our 1, 2, 3, so that we're pretty sure what number comes next, then we put dot, 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 the ellipses. And finally, the last set T, the names of all cats in the room. Well, 
in the room that I'm sitting in right now, and there are no cats, so I have no names to put in the set, and so I have the empty set. So it's just two curly braces with nothing in between. And speaking of the empty set, we, we indicate the empty set, as I've just mentioned, with two curly braces with nothing in. There's also a symbol called the null symbol, so you can represent an empty set with the null symbol. Now, we have to distinguish. Sometimes these things can get a little tricky. This is an example of something which you might think is an empty set, but it's not. The number of zebras in this room. Well, there are no zebras in this room, and zero is an actual number. So my set contains zero. That's the number of zebras in this room. Now, let's look at something a little bit different. This is an empty set. What if I said to put all the names of the zebras in my set? Well, there are no zebras in this room. Therefore, there are no names. Therefore, I have nothing to put in my set. Let's do a little exercise. Write each of these in roster form. So set I, all instructors you have this semester, write that as a set in roster form. Go ahead and hit the pause and try each one of these. All right, hopefully you've tried. Now the first three, you're on your own. Let's look at set E. Did you write 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20? If you did, you're correct. We want the even numbers between 10 and 20 inclusive. That means with the endpoints. The odd numbers between 11 and 20, because I didn't have the word inclusive in there, we do not include the endpoints. So 11 is not in there. And finally, all natural numbers between negative 10 and negative 1, well, there aren't any because the natural numbers start at 1. They're the counting numbers. Here's an example of a number of sets in set builder form. If you want to describe all the people in this classroom in set builder form, you write it as all x or all items such that that item is a person in this classroom. All students enrolled in Math 1210, you can see they're in set builder form. The odd numbers between 5 and 10, notice how I've written it there, all x or all items or all numbers such that that number is odd and that number is between 5 and 10. So I have 5 is less than x is less than 10. And now notice the difference between that and the next one where I have my endpoints inclusive. So we have 5 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 10. Cats, dogs, birds? Well, about the only way you can do that with set builder form, all items such that that item is a cat, dog, or a bird. Here we go, all natural numbers. And finally, the names of all cats in the room, all items such that that item is the name of a cat in the room. So pause. Try to write these in set builder form. All right, now that you've come back, let's see what you did. Here's set E, all X such that 10 less than or equal to X less than or equal to 20. The less than or equal to's are what covers us when we say inclusive because we're including the 10 and the 20. The odd numbers between 10 and 20 so we do not include the 10 and the 20. And all natural numbers between negative 10 and negative 1, well, that's an empty set. So we just simply write it as an empty set. Let's look at descriptor form. Here I have examples in roster form. So come up with a description, something that describes that in words. The first one we could say set D is the days of the week. 
The second one set N, we could say the names of Miss Sitkin's children. And you may have a different description than I do. Set C, I would call that the topics that we've studied so far in Math 1210, but you could describe that in other ways as well. And finally, set E, all natural numbers between 13 and 18. Now try writing these in descriptive form. Pause, and then come back and I'll show you what I wrote. Months of the year, furniture in my classroom, software applications for Math 1210, and the natural numbers between 21 and 35. Let's talk about the idea of cardinality. Cardinality is the number of items in a set. So you just simply count them. In the first one, we have 12 items. So we use the notation little n means cardinality. The cardinality of set D is equal to 12. The cardinality of set n is equal to 7 because there are 7 items in that set. The cardinality of set C is equal to 2 because there's 2 items in that set. And the cardinality of set E is 15. So now give the cardinality of each of these items. Now we have just a couple more concepts to cover. Equivalent sets. Equivalent sets are two sets that have the same cardinality, so they have the same number of items. Those items don't have to be the same. It's just the number of items. So if you look at set N and C, they each have three items, so we would say that they are equivalent. Equal sets, on the other hand, have exactly the same items in them. So which sets are equal? Well, D and N are equal because they each have all the days of the week. Set E and W are equal because they contain exactly the same numbers. Universal sets. A universal set you can think of as the world that contains your problem. All sets have universal sets. Set D is a set consisting of Monday and Wednesday. So the world that contains those items could be all the days in the week. So I could say that the universal set is all the days in the week. Set N, all students registered in Miss Sitkin's Math 1210 class. Well, there's a number of possibilities. The universal set could be all the students registered at CNM. All the CNM students registered in a math class. All CNM students regi registered in a math 1210 math class. There can be more than one choice for universal sets. Take a moment now and see if you can define universal sets for these. Now here's what I've got. And again, you may have come up with different descriptions. Well-defined sets, another concept. Well-defined sets are sets that we can all agree on the elements of. Everything that we've been talking about are well-defined sets. Now look at the examples of sets that are not well-defined. Set M, the top 10 best movies of all time. Well, my set is going to be different from your set. So that's an example of a set that is not well defined. Take a look at the slide, pause, look at all the questions. Can you answer them? 